where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in 10 years? And help them dress their future. Dress the part and it will come to you. You need to dress like what you want to be in life. My name is Lee Ha, I'm an accountant. I'm 29 and I'm on set with Tom Ford and GQ. Lee was great because he's 29 years old and he's still dressing like he's in the sixth grade. Total right. diamond in the rough. And if he had the right glasses on? Oh, he's gonna look gorgeous. Yeah. He's gonna look so chic. I would describe my style as geek chic. Usually um, with a slim profile, glasses, um, check shirt. So you're dressing? A little young for your age. And you have a perfect body. Never button the bottom button, only button the middle button. Lesson in tailoring. He's an accountant, and when he walked in and told us he was an accountant, dressed like he was in the sixth grade, I said, there's no way I would give my money to you. Ever. That's true. So, you know, if you want to be managing people's money, you need to look like you're capable of managing people's money. What you changed with my hair, I think before it was um, side parting bang, swept to the side. I would love to see him apart and quite sleek and very, not short, short, but just very groomed and very clean. We're turning him into me. No, I'm kidding. He was really adamant about the fact that he really liked what he had on. Yeah, I think we just need a slightly different mm -hmm. tie. And then, did we put the some other glasses on already on we him? We haven't tried them on yet. No. These are not going to be right on you, but maybe. He became yeah. a totally different person. He was, and he really just owned it and embraced he it. He didn't even, even talk to me once he was no. beautifully dressed. Didn't it was like... He was almost the one who struck the pose the quickest and, and just owned the suit completely. Chin down again. And burn a hole through my camera lens with your smoldering good looks. I also love the fact that it has, was a peak lapel suit. You know, a pinstripe suit, especially if you're an accountant, it's pretty ubiquitous. But by putting a, you know, an interesting shirt-tie combination with it, you can make it not look plain and dull and ordinary. And one of the most important things, I think, about how to fit a suit is to fit your waist. And, you know, he had a very, he has a great build for a suit. He's very long and tall and slim. I mean, he could be a model with his body. Uh, but still nipping it at the waist. So whoever you are, you know, you need to, I think, always have your waist uh, nipped in a bit and keep your jacket buttoned so that you can see, you know, that you have a waist. Working with Tom was an experience, both liberating and amazing. Um, I've never worked with um, anyone who's got so much control and passion for what he's doing. And that's one of the things I'll probably take away from him. Hi, I'm Toby, I'm 24, I work in sales, and I'm here on the set with GQ and Tom Ford. So what do you do? Toby works for his dad, he's in the garment industry, I believe, and he's now stepping up to kind of take on some of the responsibilities of his dad. So our thoughts with Toby, what he wanted was to look a bit more grown up. And what does your dad wear? Sometimes if you put on the suit, you get the responsibility. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So in 10 years, you'd be wearing a suit? Yeah, I think so. I'd always dress more, more casually. I tend to kind of not make too much of an impression. Don't want to rock the boat too much. Like after today, keener for like a more grown up look, a bit more structured and polished, you know? I think he innately has pretty good style and he came in with like he had, slim pants. He had great style. In fact, his before clothes, they were pretty good. They were there pretty wasn't good. a horrible thing in the suitcase. I think what we really did with Toby and what we wanted to do with him was really, I mean, he's a movie star. Okay, Jim, what would you like to see him in? Do you want to see him in something more relaxed? Like a white t-shirt with that on top of it? I like that. And then, that. although he's quite big, it's going to mm. just make him look bigger. Let's go with this. Are you sure? Yes. A few tweaks with his hair. Uh, you know, with his clothes, and I think he, he felt like a movie star and acted like a movie star. I mean, this is a guy who could totally take over from his father and who absolutely could own the company. I mean, you know, he had great confidence uh, and really is, I mean, he's incredibly handsome. Look at you smiling. Don't smile. Work the camera. Seduce the camera. No, I'll work with you tomorrow when we do these for real. I do a poof and point. <laughs> 
It gives you a little more poof, but yeah. I'll let you do it, Jim. A little bit more towards me, the face, exactly. Chin down just a touch. We'll work on your hair and your legs in a minute. He's typically handsome English, and when we put him in, you know, a fairly English suit with a turtleneck and, a, you know, a pair of almost shooting glasses, it just brought that out and really made him even more, uh, you know, more handsome. I am Feyo Matallana, I am from Madrid, Spain. Do you want my job title or do you want my general? Should I say, I'm 30 years old and I work in the film and TV production industry in the UK. And I'm here today with Tom Ford and CQ. GQ. You're really handsome. Thank you. You know that because you're a Leo. What kind of clothes will you wear? What kind of car will you drive? Where will you live? Who are you going to be dating? So in five years you're going to be a producer. Yeah. You are a Leo, very definitely a Leo. Very, very confident. In fact, while we were shooting him, he said something really funny. He said, uh, they tell me my profiles are good. And he immediately <laughs> sort of struck a, a, a profile shot, which was hysterical. But he was right, his profile was pretty great. He brought some pieces of outerwear and all the outerwear was were in earth tones, but with the most deadly shades of olive and kind of ashy browns. And when Tom put the brown shearling jacket on him, you know, he just owned it. So he hasn't it. been exfoliated since he was born. <laughs> there are pieces of skin hanging on there from 1948. We trimmed his beard. Uh, I liked his beard. I think he looks great with a beard. Absolutely. His, his beard was a little longer in certain spots. They want to sort of just even it down, but still a full beard, not just stubble. Just like a really groomed beard. Differentiating your beard from your neck gives you a very strong jawline. So it just makes you neat and clean. You know, his hair color is beautiful coffee color and his skin, he's tan, so by putting him in that same color tone, it just made him even more handsome. They look a little small on you, but also they need to be laced up and your jeans are way too short. I didn't look after myself as much as I should from, from that point of view. I wear a jumper, maybe a hoodie. A jumper is like a, oh good, wow. a hoodie without a hoodie. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's better. And there you are, wow. looking like a model. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. Sometimes if you're wearing something like a very rich dark brown and you put brown and brown and brown and your skin is brown and your hair is brown, it can just be a little heavy. Uh, and so, you know, putting white with it sets it off and, and it, it isn't heavy. Oh, that's good. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. The head shape and angle is perfect. Don't move. Excellent. Gorgeous. I like the way you're just come. staring down the camera. One thing that I learned from Tom today is to be very professional, on top of every single detail. Hi, I'm David Voyle, I'm 30 years old, I'm a recruitment manager and I'm on the set with GQ and Tom Ford. Dave is a very handsome, although I have to say he looks a little older, I think, than he is. He did say that he thought I looked four years younger than him, which would make me 48 and I'm only 30, but... But it's the premature grey thing that always does it. Yeah. Um, and the wrinkling around the eyes. Do we need to look at him any longer? A guy who wears a suit to work, a badly fitting suit, I'm afraid. But what we wanted to do with Dave was actually make him look sexier and more casual and give him a bit more edge. We shoot him on a bearskin rug by a fire with a scotch. I'm kidding. But I mean, that's what I'd yeah, like I to see. He... I'd like to see someone uptight look sexy. Before today, I would describe my personal style as semi-smart during the week, casual on the weekend. He was like, oh, my suit is slim enough. And, you know, I'm looking like the guy walking down the street that has my same occupation. And I think, in a way, you've got to take yourself out of your uniform. A lot of guys who wear suits during the week, they go right from a suit to workout clothes. Or they just take off their tie and unbutton their jacket and stay in their suit on the weekend and think that's a weekend look. So this is actually a weekend look that, that you know, most men can wear. You spend a bit more money, you get better quality. So um, I would definitely say, yeah, um, spend a little bit more and, you know, your clothes will look better, feel better and, and probably last a little bit longer as well. Dave, I think, had uh, some long eyebrows. 
eyebrow bangs, I call them, because they <laughs> hang down sometimes over your actual eye. But you shouldn't pull those uh, individual brow hairs out. What you have to do is you have to trim them. You know, your eyebrows are just about the only thing on your face, they, it, it is, that is actual facial architecture that can be changed without cosmetic surgery. I mean, this is a very definite thing on your face. And just brushing them up or just making sure that they're, you know, groomed is very important. Uh, working with Tom was amazing. Gorgeous. Now straighten that head. Yes. Oh, very handsome. This looks great. Chin down just a touch. I want to do one thing. He's directing you, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a professional model or anything, so, you know, to have someone give you that sort of direction and, um, you know, he's a real sort of sound, down-to-earth kind of person as well, so it's been great working with him. Jeffrey's just really, really, really handsome and had a beautiful smile. He was shy. He was tall, very athletic body, and he was very easy uh, to dress. Uh, can we slip a jacket on you? You know, he looks really big, but you put the jacket oh, he on looks and it's fantastic like, that jacket. It's perfect. Yeah. Well, he came in with good personal style. He came in with a, you know, a t-shirt, a striped t-shirt, and it fit well. And again, he was aware that clothes need to fit you, especially if you're someone who's. He athletic. matched his shoestrings to his jacket or shirt, as I recall. Yes, Didn't he, did. he have blue stripes and blue shoestrings? Blue shoestrings. Exactly. Yeah. Again, just a little young. Is there a reason you keep that nail longer? No. So there's no coke habit going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in terms of his hair, I think we took down, he had a bit, it was short, and then it kind of popped out a little bit, and he had a little bit of a ledge. So you have to really be careful, and that was something we did with a few guys. He looks pretty gorgeous. If I were he, and I wore that coloring, mm -hmm. I would probably live in this color. My style before would be very clean, very nice, simple, but not like extreme fashion. Just normal people, fashion. <laughs> we wanted to put him in something, something casual, something soft, uh, and you know, trying to keep his own personal style, and he loved what he was wearing, I think. Uh, but, but, you know, make him a bit more grown up. You know, a lot of guys think they can't wear lighter colors in the winter, but I think what I love about that, and the thing that really toughened up, toughened it up as a military coat. Look into my camera lens. Remember, you're seducing the person on the other side of the lens. Beautiful. I'm just going to shoot a few. You are so handsome. One thing I learned from Tom today was whatever idea you have in your head, don't kind of change it. Just really go for it. Conrad came in, and I don't think he has any idea how handsome he is. Very handsome, Conrad. Yeah. Thank you. You are. You're hiding it under all this. But yeah, you're very handsome. He's a construction worker. He wants to own his own construction company. You could get Captain Tina Jones. Think. Yeah. Once we clean you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hair was so oily. Uh, just, I'm serious. Hand disinfectant and a towel. My intuition, I think, when I first saw him was like, oh, we're going to get rid of the beard, we're going to cut his hair short, and you're like, no, no, keep that. Keep that, like, saltiness, you know, keep that masculineness. But I think about what he was wearing, and he was wearing this kind of, like, printed sweatshirt and baggy sweatpants and He was and wearing sneakers and, you know. My personal style is like uh, chaos. That's we wanted to keep way. all these guys' personalities. We didn't want to change the personalities. Yeah. We wanted to keep who they are, but just, you know, help them find the best version of themselves. Yeah. So we wanted to keep him casual in a way, but just really upgrade him so that he looks like the guy who really owns the company. By putting him in this beautiful, you know, top coat and turtleneck and pants, you're not trying to take him out of his element. You know, in the vernacular of, of, of his world, but obviously a very luxe version, Conrad was a great pleasure because once we had him dressed, I think he felt very, very proud and he really projected uh, into the camera. He was so easy to photograph. Yes, I think I'm good model today. <laughs> Tom Ford was, was really professional. It's a pleasure to work with him. 
I think men in our culture rarely get the kind of attention that we paid to all of these guys during this process. Women are very used to having men say to them, wow, you look so great, you look beautiful. I don't think most women say that to men very much. So if you're a, a woman and you're watching this, say something nice to the guy in your life. This is Joel Gazda, chef and restaurateur. He came in a bright blue suit that no one should ever wear. Could we cut your hair? You could. Fairly dramatically? Sure, why not? Could we shave your facial hair? Again, he had some tricky facial hair going on. Uh, and I think he was living in a different decade. You look like you're in Boogie Nights. You're in my favorite decade. You're in the 70s here. Staying alive kept playing over and over in my mind, you know, staying alive, staying alive. It was the, the Bee Gees, and then for a minute it was Dirk Diggler, and I thought we were in the San Fernando Valley <laughs> shooting a porn film in 1979, and Julianne Moore was going to come in in a minute, and so was uh, somebody on roller skates. My style before the makeover was quite eclectic, very crazy, a mix of things. Um, let's take a picture of you. Step against the wall if you could. about a dramatic makeover. So I think it was great because we were able to look at him with a fresh eye and just say, wow, this guy's great looking. He has amazing hair. I mean, I don't know what that was. It was kind of a modern mullet. I think it was a 70s sort of David Cassidy thing that turned into a mullet, given his stature and the size of your head. <laughs> a smaller necktie will make your neck look longer and make everything look slimmer. Look like a million bucks. <laughs> Welcome to the world of fashion. <laughs> this is why models have <laughs> traumas. Okay, great. He felt he had a certain swagger, and obviously he had stayed with that for many, many years, but when he saw himself clean-shaven with that haircut that Orbe gave him, it was just a really, a reality check, and suddenly it's like, I don't, why just own one restaurant? I can own a chain of them. Chin down, look into the camera lens. Chin down again. I'm going to appreciate myself and the image I present to the world more. Uh, the attention to detail on the inside and the outside. It's important. I mean, this is a guy who owns a restaurant, I believe, a restaurant entrepreneur in the making. And part of what we wanted to do, we asked all the guys, where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in 10 years? And help them dress their future. You know, dress the part and it will come to you. So dress like a restaurant entrepreneur, you will be a restaurant entrepreneur, you will own many restaurants. So you need to dress like what you want to be in life. Ali's an art director and he mentioned to us that his dream was to win an Academy Award for art direction. So we said, well, you should dress as though you're ready to get your Academy Award. Dream future, let's say five years from now, Every dream you want comes true. What are you doing? Where are you living? Who are you dating? What kind of car are you driving? What are you wearing? I think my personal style is a mixed match of things I appreciate and, and I collect in magazines, internet, TV, on the streets, what I see. The, the, the great thing about him is he has a, a naturally, you know, like almost a dancer's stance. Perfect posture, very proud. Um, he has great bone structure. Could we cut your hair a bit? Because yeah. it's very short and then it's very big. I know. We'd need to kind of make it not quite such a difference. Mm. And guys have to start to realize that this, the whole like super short on the sides and long on the top does not work on every face. His lips were completely destroyed from not moisturizing, so uh, we used some uh, of my uh, lip balm uh, on them, and, and you know that was important just to, to make him look groomed and to make him look neat. He's very elegant, I and mean, you could turn him into a Boldini painting. I love your idea of putting an evening clothes. I often do really extravagant evening clothes. I sell evening clothes very well. People come to me looking for amazing, interesting, different evening clothes. And uh, blue, that kind of blue velvet is one of my, my favorites. I, I wear that actually myself. What even color blue do you call that? Oh, cerulean. So we decided this is what you're dreaming of wearing when you accept your Academy Award for Art Direction on 
blah 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 film. Now stick the chin up just a touch. You're very arrogant. You're a Spanish duke. You're 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 the coolest fucking thing in the whole world. Just be proud. Think of something slightly bad. I think showing up in the tuxedo, in, in showing up like this, we are definitely a, attach a lot of respect and uh, you know uh, interest in people. If you have like a Tom Ford tuxedo, probably is going to be the best tuxedo you ever had. One thing too, we gave all these guys manicures. Manicures are so important for a man. When you're on a date with a woman or you're on a date with anybody, they're looking at your hands. So a really well manicured pair of hands are going to get in a lot more pairs of underwear than a pair of hands that are really unkempt and uh, you know scary looking. So hands, very important. <laughs>